projects. In this video, we are going to explain about the project, which is FFM, Flood Forecasting Model Using Federated Learning. Introduction of the project. The global increase in both natural and man-made disasters, particularly floods, has highlighted the urgent need for effective prediction and mitigation strategies. This project addresses the escalating risk posed by floods due to the hydrological extremes, urbanization, and climate change. Despite numerous methodologies and models, accurate flood prediction remains challenging due to the complex environmental factors. Traditional statistical methods have the limitations in handling the variability of flood-causing process, necessitating more advanced techniques. Machine learning methods have emerged as a promising solution for enhancing flood prediction accuracy and cost effectiveness. Hydrologists increasingly rely on machine learning to develop more efficient prediction models aiming for higher accuracy and better performance. However, the reliance on vast data sets for ML methods, which is ML model training presents challenges related to data privacy and security. Concerns over data sharing and compliance with data protection legislation hinders the availability of essential data for model development. To address these challenges, this project proposes a novel flood forecasting model, which is FFM based on federated learning techniques. FL enables decentralized model training, preserving data privacy and security while minimizing communication overheads. By empowering local data processing, federated learning ensures efficient flood prediction without compromising data privacy or security. Coming to the objective of the project, the primary objective is to design and implement a robust flood forecasting model that utilizes state-of-the-art machine learning techniques to accurately predict flood occurrences. The goal is to implement federated learning methodology to ensure that sensitive data remains decentralized and secure, thereby mitigating privacy risks associated with traditional centralized machine learning approaches. Ensuring the protection of sensitive data by adopting federated learning which enables local data processing and model training without the need for centralized data sharing, thus mitigating privacy risks. The ultimate aim of the project is to contribute to the reduction of flood-related casualties and infrastructure damage by providing timely and accurate flood predictions, enabling authorities to take proactive measures for flood preparedness, mitigation, and recovery. To implement this project, we need software and hardware requirements. Coming to the software requirements, we need application of Anaconda, Primary language of Python, backend framework of Jupyter Notebook, frontend technologies is Tikinter. Coming to the hardware requirements, we need operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8 GB and above, and hard disk of 25 GB and above. To implement this project, we have designed various steps in the flow of work. So coming to the first step, which is uploading flood data set. In this step, we will acquire the flood data set, which typically contains historical data related to various parameters such as water levels. Uploading the data set involves transferring it from its resource, which is local storage and cloud repository, to the computing environment where further analysis and modeling will be conducted. The next step is pre-processing the data set. Pre-processing is crucial for ensuring data quality and compatibility with the modeling process. Common pre-processing steps include handling missing values, removing duplicates, scaling numerical features, encoding categorical variables, and feature engineering to create new informative features. Additionally, data normalization and standardization is applied to ensure that to ensure that all features have similar scales which can aid in model convergence and performance. Coming to the next step, which is train and test split. This step involves partitioning the data set into separate subsets for training and testing purposes. The training set is used to train the machine learning models, while the test set is kept separate and used for evaluating model performance. The next step is running feed-forward neural network. Here we train a feed-forward neural network model, which involves initializing the network's parameters, which are weights and biases, and optimizing them iteratively using optimization algorithm to minimize a loss function. The trained feed-forward neural network model learns to map input features to output predictions. Coming to the next step, which is running extension model, which is CNN 2D. Here we train CNN 2D model, which involves similar steps as training feed forward neural network, but with specialized convolutional layers designed to capture spatial patterns in the data. The next step is uploading federated model to the server. This step involves deploying the trained federated learning model to a server 
where it can be accessed by participating clients for aggregation and further model refinement. Federated learning enables collaborative model training across distributed clients while preserving data privacy and security as only model updates are shared, not raw data. Coming to the next step, which is accuracy comparison graph. Here we assess the performance of the models, which is FFNN, which is feed forward neural network and CNN 2D. An accuracy comparison graph is created. Coming to the last step, which is flood forecasting using test data. Finally, the trained models are utilized to make flood forecasting predictions using the test data set. These predictions provide insights into the model's ability to generalize to unseen data and its overall performance in real-world scenarios. Evaluation metrics, which are MSC and RMSC, are computed based on the model's predictions compared to ground truth observations to assess its effectiveness in forecasting, which is flood forecasting. Algorithms which are used for flood forecasting are Feed-forward neural network. A feed-forward neural network is a fundamental type of artificial neural network where the information flows in one direction. In feed-forward neural network, each neuron in one layer connects to the every neuron in the subsequent layer and there are no cycles or loops in the network structure. The information travels through the network in one direction only from the input nodes through one or more hidden layers to output nodes without feedback connections. Feed-forward neural networks are utilized in the project for their capability to model complex relationships between input and output data, enabling accurate predictions for flood occurrences. Their scalability allows for the handling of large data sets while their ease of training and interpretability facilitate efficient development and understanding of the predictive model crucial for every effective flood forecasting model. As an extension, we have used CNN 2D to enhance the performance. We have used accuracy, MSE and RMSE, which are the error metrics to evaluate all the models built in the project. So here we have performance comparison graph. In this graph, blue color represents accuracy, orange color represents MSE, and green color represents RMSE. So first we will know what these metrics are. Coming to the mean squared error, which is MSE, it measures the average square difference between predicted and actual values. In this project, MSA quantifies the overall deviation of the flood prediction values from the observed data, providing the insights into the model general performance. Coming to root mean squared error, which is RMSE, it is a square root of MSE representing average magnitude of the prediction errors. In the project, RMSE serves as a standardized measure of the model's prediction accuracy, indicating how close the predicted flood values are to the actual values. The last metric is accuracy. It represents Proportion of correctly predicted flood occurrences to the total predictions made. Coming to the graph, here x-axis represents algorithm names and y-axis represents error rate. To execute the project, first we need to open the code folder which contains source code files. This is the code folder of the project. This is the dataset folder which we use for training the model. This is the flood dataset which we use for training the model. And this is the test dataset which is used for evaluating. This is main.py file. This file contains information related to front-end logic. These are the model files which contain the algorithm information and that will be loaded into the project code during runtime. And this is the notebook.ipynb file. This is a Jupyter notebook file which contains a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. It allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for the data science. This is runserver.bat file. This file initiates the execution of the server.py script, which is responsible for starting and managing a centralized server for the flood forecasting model using federated learning. The server facilitates communication between clients and coordinates the updating of the models based on received data, as indicated by the successful model update for the station names upon receiving a request from a client. So, run server.bat file is used to launch and manage the central server component of the flood forecasting model. So now we need to double click on run server.bat file to start the server. So here we can see that server has been hosted. Now we will get back to the code folder. This is the run.bat file. Instead of executing the program in command line interface, we have created windows bat file to execute the project. Now we need to double click on it to execute the project. This is the user interface of the project. With this, we can interact with the program and this is created by using the Tikinter library. So first, to execute the project, we have to upload the dataset. For that, click on Upload Flood Dataset button. 
from the folder i'm choosing this data set now we have to click on open we can observe that the data set has been loaded and few records from the data set are displayed now we need to do pre processing for this data for that click on pre process data set button here we can see that data pre processing is done and the normalized data set is displayed now we have to split this data into train and test sets for that click on train and test split here data is split into train and test sets and the total records found in the data set are 115 and total features found are 12 and the data is split into 80 is to 20 ratio and in the training set we have 92 records in the testing set we have 23 records now we will train the algorithm using feed forward neural network for that we need to click on run feed forward neural network button so here we can observe that model has been trained and here we got the error rates this is msc error rate for feed forward neural network model and this is rmsc error rate and this is accuracy rate here we have predictions for each individual station this is pro water level and this is predicted water level here in the prediction graph x axis represents test data and y axis represents predicted water level here red color indicates true water level and green color indicates predicted water level from the graph you can understand that there is no much difference between true water level and predicted water level which means that model has performed well now we will train cnn 2d algorithm for that close this graph click on run extension cnn 2d algorithm so here cnn 2d model has also been trained here we have error rates for cnn 2d model and here we have predictions for each individual station predicted by cnn 2d model and this is the prediction graph where x axis represents test data and y axis represents predicted water level and red color indicates true water level and green color indicates predicted water level from this graph we can understand that cnn model is performing well than feed forward neural network so close this graph now we need to upload federated model to the server for that we have to click on upload federated model to server button here we have to give the station name so i am giving the station name as kerala now click on okay here we got the response from the server that model updated to server successfully here in the server console we can see that there is request received from client ip and updating model of the station is kerala and model successfully updated total updated models are one now we need to click on accuracy comparison graph so here on the x axis we have algorithm names and y axis represents error rate here blue color represents accuracy and orange color represents msc and green represents rmsc from both the algorithms which is extension cnn 2d and feed forward neural network there is least error rate for extension cnn 2d algorithm which means that extension cnn 2d model is performing well than feed forward neural network so close this graph now we will test the model for that click on flood forecasting using test data button here we will upload test data now click on open so here we got the predictions so here we got the predictions for each particular station and this is the forecasted water level for each particular station for all the months now close this user interface conclusion of the project The implementation of the flood forecasting model based on federated learning technique demonstrates promising results in accurately predicting flood occurrences contributing to proactive disaster management and mitigation efforts. The decentralized nature of the FFM allows for wider access to flood prediction capabilities empowering local entities to train models using regional data sets and fostering community level preparedness and response initiatives. After rigorous evaluation the extension CNN 2D emerges with the lowest error rate among the implemented models thus it is selected as the preferred model for the flood prediction its superior performance underscores its suitability for capturing spatial patterns in flood related data enhancing the accuracy and reliability of the forecasting system overall the project contributes to the reduction of flood related casualties and infrastructure damage by providing timely and accurate flood forecasts enabling authorities to implement proactive measures for disaster preparedness response and recovery ultimately safeguarding lives and livelihoods thank you for watching video for more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in For updates on latest project videos 
Please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.